What's up, everyone? It's uh, Caddy with Money Vesting. Markets here are very, very flat on the day with the S&P 500 slightly lower, the Nasdaq slightly higher, and the Dow Jones slightly down as well. But the futures are very, very green right now, up another 75 to 80 basis points on the back of NVIDIA's earnings and a lot of sentiment that's being driven after hours and NVIDIA being up over 8 to 9% after the markets closed. Now, I do have a separate video coming out on NVIDIA later today, so I will be posting that um, and we'll be going over in a lot more detail as to what the company reported for revenue, earnings, cash flows, where the valuation is. We'll talk a little bit about the intrinsic value, the technicals, so that it's gonna be in a separate video. I'm not gonna cover NVIDIA in this video today, but uh, Fed Minutes came out and they kind of reaffirmed their stance on inflation. I ended up closing out my covered call on AMD for a 77% profit. And we also took a scalp on QEQ's intraday uh, on the short side and came out with a very, very decent scalp. A lot of members making some good profits. So again, if you want to get access to all the day trading alerts, investing alerts, options alerts, swing trading ideas, and of course, not to mention a lot of the private videos um, on Patreon, uh, the link's going to be down below if you're interested in joining. And there is a 16% discount on an annual basis. It's available for another five days and does expire at the end of this month. And we only have, I think, four or five spots left for our discord so link's going to be down below so talking about a little bit about the markets here s&p 500 not just fourth day of losses after fed minutes reaffirmed tough stance on inflation so stocks ended lower on wednesday as traders parsed through the summary of federal reserve most recent meeting looking for clues on the central bank's next move against inflation um, and the fed's meeting minutes showed that inflation remained quote well above the central bank's two percent target duh Adding, the, adding that the labor market is still very tight and contributing to continuing upward pressures on wages and prices. So nothing really new, n new like we know that the inflation is well above 2% target. Uh, but Fed officials also noted that inflation data received over the past three months showed a welcome reduction in the monthly pace of price increases, but stressed that substantially more evidence of progress across a broader range of prices would be required to be confident that inflation was on a sustained downward path. Um, the summary repeated that members believe, quote, ongoing rate hikes will be necessary um, and stocks fell following the release of the Fed minutes while Treasury yields shed most of their losses from earlier in the session. A few members said that they wanted half point or 50 basis points increase that would show even a greater resolve to get inflation down. So 50 basis points, again, it's going to be 0.5 percent. And we already know James Ballard and Loretta Messer have been very vocal about the fact that they want to have a half a point uh, rate hike. They were the advocates in the February meeting, but they are going to be once again pushing the Fed to do that in March. And we already know that the interest rate Fed funds futures are kind of shifting a little bit. Uh, since the meeting, regional presidents James Ballard of St. Louis, Loretta Messer, Cleveland, has said they were among the group that wanted the more aggressive move. As I already just said, the minutes, however, did not elaborate on how many, quote, a few were, nor which FOMC members wanted the half a point increase. The participants favoring 50 basis point increase noted that a larger increase would be more uh, would more quickly bring the bring the target range close to the levels they believe would achieve sufficiently restrictive stance, taking into account the, their views of the risks to achieving price stability in a timely way. So bottom line is uh, their main uh, argument for increasing the rates by 50 basis points or 0.5% is uh is is the idea that, that we're gonna get up to sufficiently restricted levels faster and that's gonna just make it uh make it so that inflation comes down faster as well and comes down to the target. Krishna Guha, head of Global Policy Central Bank at Strategy Evercore ISI says and I quote, though the summary noted the discussion about larger increases, there was no effort in the minutes to flag the possibility of stepping back up to 50 basis points um, pace of hikes in March. And this right here was the market. So a very, very flat day. There, we didn't really see a lot of moves up or down. Microsoft, Apple flat, Google flat, Meta flat, Amazon, Tesla, slightly higher. Walmart was down. Energy pulling back. Healthcare was slightly down. Financials were slightly down. So it was a very much a flat day, very much back and forth. And uh, consumer cyclicals were the only ones that were pushing higher up over 49 basis points. But everything else was straight up down selling off. And over the last one week, we've seen pretty much all 11 sectors in the S&P 500 red. And over the last one month, technology is the only sector that's outperforming and pushing higher up over 1%. Everything else is either flat or down. 
Orin Juice for the win, up over 2.26%, along with coffee prices pushing higher. Uh, then we got natural gas, VIX, lumber prices, lean hogs, all of them selling off. And Bitcoin just struggling at around 24 to 25000 And Ethereum also hovering around $1,600, $1,700 per coin at the moment. Now, talking about the markets here, S&P 500 is at a very, very important crossroads. So we are uh, slightly down 16 basis points, trading as low as 3991 and we are trading at a very, very important support level as mentioned in my previous video. So this is the higher low that S&P is coming down to. So that's the ascending support inside this entire uptrend. So this right here is the overall higher highs and higher low pattern for S&P 500. So we've got a very good support sitting for us at that level and not to mention this previous lower high that we're coming down to retest as well. So both of these kind of form this X right? So this is going to be up going up and this is going to be coming down. So that's the intersection, which I think is going to be very interesting for uh, the markets and for the bulls and the bears for, for us to see whether we hold up that level or if you break down even further. So really, really important levels to watch. And of course, futures right now are very green, especially NASDAQ futures up 91 basis points right now. So that does suggest that there might be some upside here going into tomorrow for the markets. Same thing with the NASDAQ. We are coming down to a huge support so, you know, we talked about 11,475, 11,400 around these levels, very, very strong support level. And right now we're seeing some buyers do step right back in on the back of NVIDIA. So we are seeing a little bit of momentum here with, uh, again, futures of 91 basis points. So support level is going to stay put around those levels. Resistance all the way up to 12,200 and S&P has got a resistance um, all the way up to 4330. You've also got an intermediate resistance at 4195, close to 4200, but a support staying put at 3970 to 4,000 points. Uh, talking about Apple, and before we get there, volatility on the day was very, very flat. It was actually down 2.6%, getting up to 23.85. So we did get up to those levels. But once again, a red candle here and again, selling off intraday because of how much momentum we saw um, intraday. And then after hours, of course, lots of buyers stepping in as well. Crude oil prices are once again down to that support, uh, trading down in the low 70s again, coming down to low 74, $75. So we are once again trading at that level for crude oil and lots of consolidation sideways for uh, this commodity at the moment. 10-year uh, yields are a little bit over 3.927%. So we are just shy of 4% right now. We got up to as much as 396 I believe. So we're definitely uh, kind of creeping up a little bit. This is going to be very, very important for us to watch because of the equity risk premiums, because of the discount rates, because of a lot of other factors that are influenced by the 10-year yields. Now, going over to Apple, Apple uh, after hours slightly higher, but overall it's been it's been coming down a little bit with the RSI, the MACD once again seeing that bearish uh, crossover, the RSI, and again the MACD also that second consecutive day of red. Um, but Apple here on the day very very flat, lots of indecision, a little bit of a doji candle. Support level next is really going to be at 137, 138 for Apple moving forward. So this right here is going to be that level to watch with a resistance staying put at 152 for Apple. Talking about Amazon. And Amazon here uh, was uh, trading as low as 95.79, so up over 1.2%. So a little bit of momentum for Amazon here on the day, but support level is going to stay put at $91, $92. So this right here is going to be that level to watch uh, for support and resistance at close to, close to $100, $405 per share for uh, the company. Uh, talking about Tesla here, and Tesla on the day was higher, up over 1.77%, so back over $200. We have seen a lot of consolidation for Tesla. I mean, it's like every time we see red, every time we see some uh, downward momentum on Tesla, buyers come flocking into the stock and, and see that as an opportunity to buy once again, and we see a lot of buyers stepping right back in. So um, resistance is going to stay put at around $200, $201. That's going to be either a resistance or a support depending on where we're trading. Right now, Tesla is slightly above 200 so that is going to be a very good support resistance level to watch for Tesla right now. And just a lot of consolidation. RSI, MACD still suggesting more potential downside, but the sentiment is just way too strong for this company. And that's one of the reasons why you know I mentioned in my previous videos that from a long perspective, the risk reward is very unfavorable because we're already pushed up so much. And from a short perspective, you are really trading against the trend and the sentiment. So you got to be very, very careful if you are going short in this environment that you have your proper risk management, you have your proper stop losses in place so that you're not getting burned on the upside considering how strong the sentiment and, this, and, the, and the euphoria in this market really is, regardless of what's going on with the technicals or the fundamentals, right? I can sit here and name you know, quite a few names, quite a few stocks that are trading at 
you know, overvalued levels and technicals just don't make sense. They are overbought and overextended, but that doesn't mean that they're going to immediately become good candidates for a short because we have little to no confirmation and the sentiment and the euphoria in the markets right now is still driving those companies, still driving those stocks higher and higher to new heights. So that is something that we have to understand. And right now we are in that environment. We're not always in that situation, but right now we are, and we have to acknowledge it. And that's exactly one of the reasons why both on the long side and on the short side, it's a little bit more difficult to trade. That doesn't mean that hedges won't work. That doesn't mean that certain types of option strategies won't work. They absolutely will. And, you know, our members have been killing it. They're crushing it in the markets with spreads, uh, we, you know, with colored, uh, covered calls and, of course, cash and puts and a lot of other strategies. But it's just that if you're simply taking a straight up share trade on the upside or the downside, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because of the risk reward that's set up right now um, at the moment. So for Tesla, again, going back to that example, is it, is it uh, trading at a very high valuation? Is it already trading at over overbought levels? Yes. But that does, does that mean that it's going to immediately come, come down as a short opportunity? No, because the sentiment is way too strong, right? Every time we come down and see red, buyers step in and we see a lot of momentum back up on very high volume. So we have to keep that in mind. NVIDIA, I'm going to skip over because I will be doing a separate video on NVIDIA later today. For advanced micro devices, uh, down 21 basis points. So I ended up closing out my covered call for a 77% profit, as I said earlier. So we'll be selling new calls on the next green day for AMD. So uh, the next green day for advanced micro devices most likely will be tomorrow because it was up over 3% after hours on the back of NVIDIA's earnings. So it was trading as high as $79 once again. Uh, tomorrow, once again, I will be selling covered calls one month out and the premiums I'm sure will be very, very good for advanced micro devices. So again, if you want to get access to those options alerts, because I'm telling you, I will be selling some covered calls tomorrow. Uh, the link's going to be down below if you're interested in joining us. Um, next up, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, PayPal here and PayPal on the day was up 32 basis points, so a little bit back up to 7550. This is going to be a resistance for PayPal. So you know, we have gotten rejected at that level quite a few times. Uh, and this right here is going to be that gap that we need to fill for uh, PayPal at the moment. You know, it's still a downward gap and PayPal here coming down and, and seeing some nice uh, oversold conditions on the MACD. Our side, not quite still neutral, but that is going to be that resistance at $75, $76 per share for PayPal. Talking about block or in other words, square up over 1.3%. So a little bit of indecision, lots of doji candles forming here on the day for a lot of individual stocks, but square next resistance really is going to be at $76. So this right here is going to be that level to watch and support level is going to stay put at $58, $59 per share. I do still think that it's a little bit on the overbought side or not, not so much overbought, but definitely on a higher valuation. But RSI MACD has been coming down to more reasonable levels. Uh, talking a little bit about meta. And Meta on the day, again, doji candle, lots of indecision in the markets. Uh, so consolidating sideways, only down half a percent. We still have this gap that uh, Meta would need to fill eventually. And we got a resistance all the way up to 183 for uh, for Meta platform. So this right here is going to be that level to watch. And of course, we got a gap to fill on the downside with 153 sitting as a support for Meta moving forward. Uh, talking about Netflix and Netflix here down to that support, literally to the T, 332.56 is that support that we talked about in our previous videos and low for the day, 332.82. So coming down to that support here for Netflix and we are seeing a lot of uh, consolidation right now and uh, we'll see if that support level continues to validate and this is also a higher low for Netflix at the moment. Uh, talking about Google and Google here was down slightly, 27 basis points. Well, once again, lots of uh, indecision, a little bit of a doji candle for Google and uh, support level next is going to be at $86, $87. So this right here is going to be that level to watch with the resistance staying put all the way up to $100 per share. Google is one of the very few stocks, few companies that I do think the valuation is quite reasonable and, and really, really good for this company. So I would really uh, be encouraged to buy more shares and all cost average a little bit more if and when it drops down to the low 80s uh, once again. Maybe even right now at 91.80, it's really not that big of a deal. I'm not going to be super strict on you know the pricing there. So another maybe another couple percentage points drop and I would be very interested in adding more. Uh, talking a little bit about Microsoft and Microsoft here also falling down about half a percent. The next support really is going to be at 247. So this right here is going to be that level to watch and uh, next all the way down to 218, $219 per share for, for Microsoft. Um, and of course, we our fair value is a lot lower at closer to $200. So I'm kind of staying away from Microsoft at the moment, considering how high it's already trading at. And similar to NVIDIA, I think the price of sales multiple just doesn't make sense for Microsoft. It is definitely a lot higher. The volume was a lot lower on Microsoft today. 
So that is something to pay attention to. And of course, Shopify here are getting validated at that support at $42. This right here is a support up one and a half percent. So again, lots of indecision, a bit of a doji candle here. Valuation is a little too high. Earnings were not that great. RSI MACD continues to sell off. So I wouldn't be surprised if you do see a further breakdown for Shopify even further. And the next support really is going to be in that low 30s, high 20s for Shopify. So bottom line is, I think uh, after hours, there was this big celebration, big party. Uh, once again, buyers is stepping in and futures are very, very green. But I would still be very cautious because it's this type of market that really kind of sucks you in um, and, you know, kind of uh, makes you feel more and more FOMO if you're missing out for a lot of these stocks, a lot of these companies. But again, I, I want to reemphasize, I want to re uh, recalibrate us to a point where we need to be focused more on the data and the numbers and think logically as opposed to thinking based on our emotions and markets pushing higher and it's time to buy, buy, buy. But instead, just, you know, focus on numbers, focus on the intrinsic values. That's going to serve as a, as a much better purpose long term as opposed to simply buying on sentiment. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. And the link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. And uh, feel free to check it out. And there is a 16% annual discount that's available till the end of this month. And you'll get access to all the options alerts, um, you know, trade alerts, trade ideas, all that stuff. So happy investing and I'll see you all in the next video.